So, I got a new phone recently, it's a smartphone, and I have been doing little since then besides just playing app games. There are so many of them, and I thought, hey, why not just review a bunch of them for my show? So, let's dive in. Let's start out by reviewing the cash cows of the app game world. Let's start out with Flappy Bird. This is an infuriatingly genius game. Or maybe a geniusly infuriating game, one of those two. The reason why I can suck you in like that is that it looks so much easier than it actually is. The actual gameplay is very simple. You tap the screen and the bird goes up in an arc. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. The pipes are just close enough together to make you baffled that you've been trying for 10 minutes and still can't make it past the very first pipe. This is also attributed to the fact that this game is absolutely relentless. If even a single pixel, and I mean a actual pixel on the phone of your bird even touches the pipe, you're going down. But I think when it comes to difficulty, they went too far. It's likely that you'll just throw this one away in disgust. Angry Birds. I know that I am late to this party, but Angry Birds is a flippin' addicting game. This game uses the strategy that most app games use, which is being easy at the beginning. And then it gets hard fast. I think that the creators of this game intended for it to be a puzzle, but there are so many variables that it really is just trial and error. They make it so that there's always just one tiny pig you can't kill, or just one too few birds. The birds themselves are actually really cool. Well, most of them anyway. It is ironic that the icon of the game, the red bird, is by far the most useless one. It's light, impossible to aim, and you can do almost no damage with it. Unless it's glass, but even that's doubtful. But besides that little part, this game actually does get a thumbs up. It's very creative and very fun. Next up is Tiny Wings. I honestly don't know what it is about Tiny Wings that makes it so fun. You spend most of the time crashing, and yet you keep playing anyway. It is remarkable how easily this game gets you into a frenzy. You are just praying that the next hill is the right shape and at the right place, because you can feel that night right behind you. The whole idea does raise a few questions, though. Where is this bird supposed to even be anyway? Why are there so many hills that are so smooth? How does the bird not you know, get crashed into a bloody pulp when they crash against the hill at like 80 miles an hour. Why can it only fly during the day? You know, I have similar questions about the last two games as well. Tiny Wings is fine though. Doodle Jump is the very first app game I ever bought. I have seen computer games similar to this one, but this one is awesome through simplicity. The only thing you have to do is tilt the phone and tap it on occasion. But I have a couple questions. First off, where do the platforms go? The instant that they go below the screen, they just vanish. Is there somebody right below you trying to kill you? And I also feel inclined to ask about the other themes of the game. You never play them much because they are all harder. There's one that has an enemy every three feet, one has the cracked platforms and some stable platforms look the same, and one is completely in the dark. I I'm just not sure that they were needed. Next are the puzzle games, beginning with Candy Crush. I hope I'm not the first person to notice that this is just a bejeweled clone. It goes right down to having colorful pieces of hard candy that look like jewels. But I do think that Candy Crush is better than Bejeweled because it's more puzzle oriented. There are objectives to each stage other than the high score. But that also means that this game can be infuriating. It just seems like the game is purposely giving you candy that will not help. Shouldn't it be random? This also has a problem that the next two games have. You have a limited number of lives, and if you lose just a few too many levels, you cannot continue without either waiting 30 minutes or paying money. Of course I'm not going to pay, so that means that the game just stops. It's not even like you get a game over, it's like a virus steals your candy crust for 30 minutes. But this game is still good and plenty addicting. Next up is Juice Cubes, which is literally Candy Crush. These two games are absolutely identical in every way but one, and that's the gameplay. Instead of switching to make lines of three or more, in Juice Cubes, you draw lines connecting adjacent fruit of three or more. 
But no name guy, you ask. How is it identical to Candy Crush then? Well, you walk down a path with levels on it. If you match four or more cubes in a row, one gets white stripes, meaning that it will either clear a horizontal or vertical row. Some cubes become bombs. There are squares of sand that are removed when a match is made on it. There are seashells that go away if a match is made next to it. There are like little ice cubes freezing some cubes in place that will not melt unless you match that cube. Sometimes you have to drop buckets to the bottom of the screen. There are some levels that are identical to levels in Candy Crush. Sometimes I try to accidentally switch fruits or draw candy lines because there is just no difference. They aren't both made by King either. I would say that these are grounds for a lawsuit, but nearly all of these games rip off something. This one game has one gigantic advantage over Candy Crush though. You decide which moves are made and when. In Candy Crush, you get blocked constantly by the game misreading your moves or making a combo. So I guess that evens out. Next up is Farm Hero. When I saw the advertisement for this, I thought that it was just a Candy Crush clone. But it's actually more different from Candy Crush than Juice Cubes. Sure, the gameplay is the same, but your objective is usually to collect a certain number of a specific shape. There's also a villain, Rancid the Skunk Raccoon thing with the mustache. But this game is another problem that I saw in both Juice Cubes and Candy Crush. There are points where in order to continue, you either need to pay money, bug your Facebook friends, have them do it for you, or wait, and I mean for days. What is the point? Why can't you just continue? This game is basically being a bully, hiding the rest of the game from you until you give it your lunch money. Need money, Facebook friends, or a few days of time, huh? What else do you need? A glass of water? Do you want me to make you a sandwich? This is just so, so stupid. Ultimate Puzzle is basically just a standard jigsaw puzzle that falls on a square grid. It seems okay, but then you look at how many levels there are. There are 6,000. Who on this planet is actually going to do them all? Yeah, I'll get back to you in Season 8 and tell you what the later levels are like. On the novice mode alone, there are a thousand levels. This very quickly stops feeling like a game and starts just feeling like busy work. The levels blend together and you get bored fast. I did the math, and if you took 30 seconds to do each level, it would take you two solid days to finish, and with no breaks either. I would love to hear from somebody who actually completed all of the levels. Next to what I like to call the reflex games beginning with Subway Surf. This is just a standard run and jump game, where some vandal running from the police. This is a kid too, he looks like eight. Hey kids, go spray paint trains and run around rail yards. It's cool. How it works is that there are three strips and you swap between them, jump over things, and occasionally roll under things. The weirdest part is that there are coins and you seem to go much further if you just ignore them. You play for longer and go further if you just avoid them because they're on the most dangerous paths. That actually seems like real life too. You run further and f do it faster if you don't constantly stop to pick up coins. This game is actually sort of meh. For a reflex game, it moves pretty slowly. Temple Run 2 is a better alternative to Subway Surf. Not only does it move faster, there's more variety. By the way, the original Temple Run is pretty much the same game. In both games, you run from an angry temple spirit that chases you. But if you go long enough without tripping up, it just sort of gives up and goes away while you continue running at full sprint. This part always confused me. Why does this explorer dude keep running so fast even when there seems to be no immediate danger? No matter what happens, he just keeps running, jumping and rolling without slowing down at all. He actually speeds up the entire time. Doesn't he get tired? This is one heck of a runner. Mr. Explorer guy should stop searching for treasure and join the US Olympic team. This game is one crazy ride though, and I would recommend it. Lastly is Smash Hit. This is a beautiful, yet somehow also very intense game. Basically, you're a camera with a ball bearing launcher going through some weird glass dimension. The goal is one, break everything in your way because if you crash, you lose 10 balls. Two, break crystals because that gets you balls. And three, go as far as you can without losing all of your balls. Go ahead and pause the video for a minute to laugh. 
If you lose all of them, your game is over. Now, what about some psychological state called flow, which is an intense focus that is caused by a combination of high difficulty and high skill level or attention? If you ever want to know what flow feels like, play this game. The whole thing feels like a dream, with a strange environment that's sometimes relaxing and other times hostile. It is astounding in how many ways glass can kill you. This is probably the best app game I've come across, as well as the one that I would recommend the most. So, now that I've entered the wonderful world of app games, what have I learned? While they're varied in content, there are definitely some common themes. Many of cute characters, ask for you to involve social media, require you to either pay, ask friends, or wait to continue, start out really easy, rip off other games, and suck you in until you realize that you just spent the past hour playing app games. You could probably make a drinking game out of that, but there should be one rule that if you actually give in and pay them money, you should give yourself a wedgie. Because if you pay them unnecessary money, they win. Now if you excuse me, I've got some app games to go play.